We're continuing Never Draw Back, and we're doing it in a table talk session because I want you guys to be able to ask questions as well. We always want to give you opportunity to ask questions because it's not about what we know. It's about what you leave out of here with. Mm -hmm. Everyone in here are world changers. Everyone in here is, is uh, extremely effective with the power of God backing them. So you only are able to do what you understand in the word. You can never surpass your believing, your understanding of the word. You can never surpass that. So we want to make sure you're equipped with the right tools and knowledge so that you can go, go out and be effective. Rule in your community, in your neighborhood, wherever you are, be effective, be contagious. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. So I see you don't have any notes, Pastor. Oh, they're there. <laughs> I was about oh, to I say. Got, I got the goods. I got the goods. <laughs> All huh? right. Just sure. making sure, <laughs> or it's going to be a quick table talk. <laughs> so uh, you want to go over the first three points, or are we just going to yeah. dig in at point four? So our foundational scripture, let's do that first, Okay. is Luke chapter 9. Let's look at verse 61 and 62. It says, another said, yes, Lord, I will follow you. But first, let me say goodbye to my family. But Jesus told him, anyone who puts a hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. So the big, the, uh, the main per the point is what is drawing back? Because your definition of drawing back may be another person's definition um, of moving forward. So everyone can give all their excuses as according to their feelings and what, their, what situation they're in, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Let me ask you this. The situation that you may be in, that, does that move or change God's word? No. Say it again. Yes or no? no? No, it doesn't. Your situation, your circumstance that you may find yourself in takes a back seat to God's word. Amen. God's word is final authority. Say that with me. God's word, God's word is final, is final authority, authority, authority in my life. In my life. So that means I don't care what you're faced with. It don't matter what the circumstance is in your life. Am I drawing back or am I progressing? Mm -hmm. Is my faith ever increasing or is it decreasing? We're supposed to have ever increasing faith, mm -hmm. ever increasing faith, right. always moving forward. Oh, well, you don't know the situation I'm in. <laughs> I don't care about the situation you're in. God is greater. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? It sounds cold, but look what Jesus said. One man said, I want to go bury my father. He says, let the, let the spiritual dead bury the dead. Right? He's there. This is life are being offered. Come with me. Right? The most powerful man on the earth is asking you to follow him. But your circumstance and situation gives you an excuse to say no. You put it that way, it's like, oh, right? So what's God's definition of drawing back versus what's your definition of drawing back? It's drawing back. You have a good excuse is what it's called. You have an excuse, right? Amen. Yeah. And what Jesus said, you know, it might sound harsh to us mm -hmm. because we're not using the right definition. But what you said last week that really stuck with me was that's just how important the things of God are. We need to recognize how important this thing is. It's, it's not just something, you know, we do on Sunday. I'm going to go to church. Oh, maybe I won't. No, this is important what we're doing. Somebody's right. life, our own life, right. and somebody else's life hangs in the balance that's because right. of it. That's right. And no, that's how serious it is. That's how serious it is. Yeah. Um, our first point, we must re re -pri our, <laughs> reprioritize our day-to-day -day life. You have to. You have to reprioritize your day-to-day -day life. If you're too busy for God, if you're too busy to serve, mm -hmm. then you're too busy. Right. How do you expect to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant, when you're too busy? Mm -hmm. You're too busy to follow God's word. The word says, forsake not to assemble yourselves together. Well, I'll just watch it at home. 
I'll just, I'll just stream it. You know, we will never just live stream it. I don't care what kinds of technologies out there. We will never, ever live stream. Why? Because that will make you, I will be helping you violate Hebrews 10, 25 and 26. Forsake not to assemble yourselves together. You need each other. There's no such thing as a Lone Ranger Christian. Jesus wasn't alone. What makes you think you can be? Right. Amen. 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 Jesus gathered 12. Yeah. Yeah. Why 12? I don't know, but when one failed, he replaced them, right? Yeah. So obviously, when you're together, uh, God moves. Yeah. A strand of two or three is not easily broken. Yeah. Two or three touching anything. It should be given to you, right? These are all scriptures about being together. But you, some of you guys just thumb your nose at it. You don't care. Well, that's, a, that's a drawing back. Yeah. Oh, but what excuse will you give it? Okay, all right. So we must re, uh, reprioritize our day-to-day life. This is Matthew 6. Um, the scripture is Matthew 6, 24 through 34. We will not go there. There's a lot there. But the bottom line is uh, in verses uh, 33 and 34 it says seek first the kingdom of God above some of the things oh. thank you who said that who said all who said all for there you go <laughs> yeah, she, she got her ears open yeah. seek first the kingdom of God above all else yeah, yeah. Well, well, my mama yep <laughs> your daddy yep my boss yep seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously. This means, this doesn't mean it has nothing to do with sin. It means living the way God is telling you to live. The way the Bible, his word is telling you to live. Well, how's the word telling you to live? Putting him first. Mm-hmm. We keep putting too big of an emphasis on sin. When Jesus took care of that on the cross. Right. That's right. As long as you're sin conscious, as listen to this, as long as you're sin conscious, you will always see yourself as weak and, and undeserving. Yeah. Well, you're more than a conqueror. Yeah. Amen. Why are you more than a conqueror? Because Jesus already took care of sin. Yeah. So now live righteous. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Amen. Okay. Verse 34 uh, says, oh, let me finish it. Let me finish 33. Live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow. Some of you guys are already concerned about tomorrow. Mm. Oh, I got to wake up early. I got to go to work. I got to do this. What am I going to do tomorrow? Oh, my bills do tomorrow. Oh, this light bills do tomorrow. Well, if you're living righteously, yeah. then those things are, will have no effect. You can go to sleep peacefully. Amen. Right? Because Amen. God is your source. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring his own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. So what, you, what can you do today? How can you obey today? And obey. Amen? Amen. Come on, guys. Put a smile on your face. Don't let the, don't let the devil know you. I, don't let them know they're talking to you. Hey, I'm not talking to y'all, right? No, no. Smile. <laughs> smile. I'm like, oh, he's talking to somebody, not me. <laughs> you sitting there all offended. I know it's you. <laughs> right? Come on. Sometimes you just got to fake it. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I can't it. stand that. I can't stand that saying, fake it till you make it. Oh, awful. Um, the importance of the kingdom was so great that Jesus spent the last 40 days here on earth talking about it. Before he ascended to heaven, he talked about the kingdom of God. That kingdom is a system, a rule, a government that's within you that overtakes every other system. Kingdom of darkness, uh, our government system. So if the government ever told you to do something that's contrary to the word, you can stand on the word. Like Daniel did in the lion's den. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. Amen? you're able to stand. We have examples of that. Amen? Okay. Point number two, we want to get going because we want to finish this. This should not turn into four parts. Right. <laughs> Shouldn't have been two, to be honest. So point number two was we must know and believe what the Word says about every situation. Man. Can you just say a and meditate on that? Say it again, Carmen. We must know and believe what the word says about every situation. Every situation. Every situation. If your life is ordered by God 
and something comes in and tries to knock you off track mm -hmm. from how the Holy Spirit already aligned it, you got to make the word of God final authority. Mm -hmm. You you have to make God's word final authority in that situation because it will come. Amen. It will come. Oh, I'm being attacked because you're human. Mm -hmm. The devil don't like you because you live here on earth, right? Don't think you're getting attacked because you did something wrong. No, that's the devil's job. The devil's job is to steal, kill, and destroy you. That's his job. Oh, I better get in church or he's attacking me. No, you should get in church beside him attacking you. <laughs> you don't go run into God because you're getting attacked. You should have been in church. You're going to get attacked, but now you have a weapon. That's right. You're ready You have for a that. shield. You're ready for it. Right? Amen. I know I'm kind of just talking, I'm forgetting you and everything. Else. <laughs> Sorry. You can have a seat. I was kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, what, what are those two things that'll like uh, keep you from? Um, <laughs> yeah, they're right here. Or that'll start you from start you to draw back okay, you on those two look. things: offense and unforgiveness. And unforgiveness and the distractions, the cares. The cares of the world. Yeah. So under this point, yeah. there's two things uh, that will definitely cause you to draw back, and one is the cares of this world. Mm -hmm. So what that means is you're, you're given an ultimatum. Um, oh, do I go to church or do I do this? Whatever it is. Yeah. They could be, oh, the uh, Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Super Bowl. Yeah. We actually did really well. Yeah. We Absolutely. did really well on Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. you know, um, I think almost everybody was here. Yeah. I'm not sure. But she said, I was. <laughs> that's right. Find yourself faithful. Right. You're right. Faithful. We've lost meaning of that word. What, what is faithful? God's looking for faithfulness. Right? Oh, God, use me. Why? You can't even show up at church. You can't be used and faithful setting up, tearing down. Right? Oh, God, use me. <laughs> Please. I mean, for real. Am I stepping on toes here? First Peter. First Peter 5. <laughs> First Peter 5. What does that mean? I don't care. I don't, care. <laughs> I don't take that care. Care what you think? I'm here to preach the word. I'm here to tell you the truth. This is for you so you can excel. Mm -hmm. You know God wants you to have an abundant life here on earth? Mm -hmm. Now it's not about material things, but when you're the child of the king of kings, then why would you be broke? Right? right? Why would you have needs? I bet you Baron Trump don't have needs. That little boy ain't got no needs. You understand what I'm saying? He doesn't have any needs. Whoever else has a lot of money? Oh, I'm not kidding. Nobody else. Right? Um, what's the Amazon dude? What's his name? Yeah. Jeff Bezos. Bezos. How you be the richest man in the world, get divorced, is still the richest man in the world. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How you get divorced and still... After the wife taking half, you still the richest man in the world. You understand what I'm saying? Where are we in this whole thing? We're the children of king. We're the children of a king, of the king. Amen. 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 Come on now. We're not thinking um, big enough. So the cares of this world will cause you to draw back and offense and unforgiveness. That's right. It's just not worth it. Why well, give that person that place in your life? We need to learn the art of exhaling. <sighs> you mean nothing. You're, not, you're no longer causing me pain. We need to learn that art. It's not that you don't love them. It's just you won't allow them to be a bad effect in your life. Amen. So forgive them. Forgive them. It's not for them. You're not letting them off the hook. It's for you. It's so you can stay connected with God. Forgive them. Forgive. Forgive. That person's not worth it. Mm -hmm. That person isn't worth it. That person is stopping you from being or living the abundant life. But don't let that person stop you from living an abundant life. It's not worth it. Amen? Amen. 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 Y'all with me? Amen. Come on now. We talk about how not to never draw back. Mm -hmm. We want to move forward. We want to progress in God. Amen. It's for you. Everyone's house in here should be paid off. Amen. Everyone's house in here should be paid off. You should be buying your cars cash. Buy your cars cash. 
if you do finance it, it's because you're working on your credit or something. I don't know. Whatever. You're working on yeah. whatever. You, you just want to exercise this. I don't know. But you have a choice. You can wake up in the morning, yeah, I'll pay it off today. Mm -hmm. Boom. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. We don't have to finance. The Bible says, oh, no, man, anything but love, mm -hmm. right? So what that means is, it's not saying you can never, ever finance something. It means is the borrower is always serving to the lender. Yes, so the second that lender try to rule over you or, or uh, rule you by your, the circumstance or situation, you don't have an answer, now he's, he's Lord over you. Right. you. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. You put yourself in that position. Well, you can finance it, and then the company says, hey, you need to do this or this. Man, get out of my face. Yeah. Right? And pay it off. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is what kind of life we should be living. Mm -hmm. And not trying to keep up with the Joneses, but just because you're the son of a king. Mm -hmm. You're a child of God. That's right. Right? Your houses should be paid off. It's 2023. You should have a 2024 already. Why not? Well, it's not even out yet. For me, it is. Come on, cash. Come on. You guys are living just good enough. No, man. Come on. You are a king. And nothing's stopping you but you. So dare we do, dare we do what others are failing to do. Come on, let's do it. Oh, well, you talk about materialistic things and you talk about that. Well, the equivalent is Jesus riding into town on a mule that's never been written before. Mm -hmm. A donkey, a colt, yeah. that's never been written before. Without spot or blemish. Mm -hmm. You can't get no better than that. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's kind of, it's a saying that says, uh, um, <laughs> uh, Jesus sat on a donkey in a rolling town and people, you know, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest and laying palm trees and bowing, that sort of thing. Well, when the day was over, they put the donkey back into the stall and he said to all the other <laughs> people in the barn, and the other animals said, you see how the, all those people were bowing at me? <laughs> you see that? <laughs> That's a little humor. Yes. But, <laughs> uh, but when you're in the company of Jesus, good things happen. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay. Um, so that was point number two. Mm -hmm. We must um, believe the word in every situation. Mm -hmm. Believe what the word says. Mm -hmm. And then point number three was we must stay the course by keeping our eyes on Jesus. Man. This goes with the cares of this world. There's all kinds of situations you can find yourself, find yourself in that will get you to get your eyes off of Jesus. Even if you're following and walking in his will. Peter, Jesus, if it is you, permit me to come out. That's right. And Jesus said, come. come. Right? Come. And Peter was like, you bet y'all come. He jump off the boat, boom, heading towards Jesus, right? Yeah. But then the noise... Remember, reprioritize your life. Mm -hmm. The noise. You might reprioritize re re it, but your phone rings and you see a so-and-so. <sighs> right? Mm -hmm. Sound like somebody got a so-and-so out uh -huh. there. <laughs> somebody got a so-and-so. Your phone rings. <laughs> it's either that girl you shouldn't be talking to or it's a bill collector. Oh, oh. You know, when I used to live in debt, I used to dread. Like my phone ringing, and I don't know his number. I'm ducking and dodging, <laughs> right? Yeah. I, hey, I was trifling before. I was. Come on. Now, I ask a, phone, a, a number I don't know like that. Hello? Oh, is this Rodney? You bet it is, because I owe nobody nothing. That's right. I don't owe anyone anything. Mm -hmm. I ain't ducking and hiding from you. That's right. Yes, I am. I don't have to be like, oh, wait, who's calling? <laughs> Who called first? <laughs> uh, this is so-and-so. Oh, no, he ain't here. <laughs> I'll oh, tell he him here. you called, though. I, yeah, I'll tell him you called, but <laughs> he ain't here. Or oh, you got the wrong number. Those days are over, praise Amen. God. Amen. Amen. Praise God, those days are over. Woo! The anxiety that comes with that. I can be like, yeah, I'm Rodney. What you want? Right? I expect my phone to ring 
and they're asking me for help. Right? They're asking me for help. You see, flip the script. Right. What do you want from me? What do I have that you want? Amen? Amen. That's the way, that's, that's, we need to renew our minds and who we are. And let's get on track that way. Am I talking to somebody in here? Yes. Come on, okay. Man, I don't know one, nothing. Trust in the Lord, do not give up. Giving up is the shortest route to failure. Yes. You may be working on something. God's giving you a dream. He's created you for a certain purpose. And you live it. It's, it's in you. you it, it's in you. It's just who you are. Don't give up. Don't give up. Most people at the end of their life, you go to hospice care, ask them, what grits do you have? Not risking it. Not taking chances. I should have took more chances. Especially you young people. Right. Oh, my goodness. Stop letting... I got to stand up real quick. I apologize. Stop letting the world tell you who you are. Stop letting the world tell you what you can and can't do. Oh, it's not your time yet. You're too young. Okay. Did you know David was 16 years old and ran to the front lines of the battle? There's a war going on, a battle between the Philistines and the Israelites. And he was 16 years old and he ran to the front lines in front of everyone. Talking crazy. Hear me now. Mm-hmm. All the people, professional uh, champions and soldiers. Right. He brought his little 16-year-old Shepherd Hyde <laughs> down in that valley and said, you better watch your mouth. Mm-hmm. You're cursing the God of Israel. Mm-hmm. And this day, I'm going to take your head from you. Mm-hmm. You, you, got, you guys ain't hearing me. This guy's nine feet tall. Goliath's nine feet tall. He's a professional champion. With spear, with a sword, a shield, the whole get up. Picture your most favorite uniform. I don't know. You're a football player. You know, you got your little spats on. You got your spats on your cleats. You got your little stuff, you know, your arms, whatever. You got the nice helmet with the nice face mask, not the one that looks like a kicker. <laughs> that one bar. No, you got a nice, you got the U on the oh. you, you got the nice pads. Right? You look all, you got your gloves on. I mean, you look nice. Well, that's equivalent to Goliath. And David was in a gown. Shepherd, a shepherd's uh, getup. Sandals. They didn't have closed toe shoes. He didn't have Nikes. Timberlands, he didn't have any of that. With a slingshot. He was grossly outmatched. Yeah. Remember the God factor. Yeah. You have the God factor. So no matter how young you are, take risks. Even if you weren't a Christian, I'm gonna say this. You young people, even if you're even if you don't have God on your side, you got parents still. Right? You got parents that are, you living in their house. Take a risk. Do something. Oh, okay, I'm not, I'm not old enough. Why? Why can't you? Uh-huh. What's stopping you? <laughs> What's stopping you? you. And once you start, don't give up. The shortest route to failure is giving up. Don't give up. Say, I will not give up. I will not I give up. I will progress and move forward. I will progress and move forward. That's right. There you go. All right. I have to get that out real quick. You young people, get going. Go, 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 go. And that's actually the point we're really going to spend most of our time on today. Ooh, I sure did. I don't want to hit it myself. Point number four. (laughs) Yeah. Point number four is we must always keep moving forward. And, you know, what's interesting is you're never at a standstill. And that's what came to me when you were talking about this point. We might think that we can take a break. You know, we've got here Mm -hmm. and we're going to take a break and relax. But when you do that, you're going to find yourself moving backwards. You're going to fall back automatically. That's why Mm -hmm. you must always keep moving moving forward. forward. Even if you're crawling, move forward. Move forward. So now I'm going to go somewhere. Those of you who are here, let me hear. Stay with me on this. We do what by faith? 
We walk by faith. Right. We live. We progress. We go by faith. Amen? Amen. Everybody agrees with that, right? Right. That's what we're called to do. Amen? Amen. Okay. We are to walk by faith. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Did it say, therefore I stand? No. no. Did it say stand? No. no. Therefore I wander? No. Oh, you go and you go. <laughs> no. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Stop fighting shadows. Stop fighting shadows. Are you getting me? Yes. Does God want you in danger? No. No. He doesn't want us in danger. Mm-hmm. So when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you might think you're doing God's will by fighting these things that you come across. No. You're fighting shadows. Yeah. You're distracted. You just got distracted. You're fighting shadows. Walk through. Mm -hmm. I fear no evil. Why? Because they rod and I stab. They comfort me. Come on, y'all. I walk through the valley. Why? Because I'm who's with me? Bigger than the valley or anything in it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Those are shadows, and the shadow of a dog never bit anybody. Anybody got bit by a shadow? Has anybody ever got bit by a dog before? I mean, I have. It was the actual dog, right? It wasn't a shadow of the dog. It was a dog. It was that darn dog. (laughs) Stop fighting shadows. Stop fighting shadows. That's a type of distraction. When Jesus said, let's go to the other side. On his way to the other side, he had to go through the valley of the shadow of death. Oh, right. What was he doing when, he was going, when they were going to the other side? Sleeping. 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 The bottom of the boat. Water come there first. <laughs> right? He down there sleeping. Now, Matthew, excuse me, Peter, there's Matthew there too, but Peter was a professional fisherman. Don't you care that we're going to perish? He knew how dire the situation was. Mm -hmm. He knew how dire the situation was where he's like, how can you sleep? Don't you even care that we're going to die? And Jesus is like, oh, my goodness, you done woke me up from my nap. (laughs) And you guys know what he did. He calmed the wind and the waves. He called for peace. He didn't spend his time rebuking. First he was asleep, but for their behalf, hey, peace. Be still. Right? He called for peace for the wind and then told the waves, be still. Knock it off. Get back in order the way my father designed you. Right? He was like, why do you have so little faith? We're going to the other side. We're going through the valley of the shadow of death. This is a shadow. My word says we're going to the other side. Why are you doubting we're going to make it? Are you, get, are you getting that? You, you good. <laughs> you good. You good. You better go run on that camera. <laughs> the word says I'm going to the other side. Mm-hmm. Amen? Amen? Why are you being distracted? Why are you letting the devil distract you? Keep going. Keep moving forward. Keep progressing. You stop pulling out your, your shoe of faith and the sword of the spirit. Oh, devil, nah, 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 nah. Man, take your height forward. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Go forward. Mm-hmm. That's just a shout. That's just a distraction. Right? right? Mm-hmm. Some of you need a word from the Lord so you know where you're going. And anything that comes against that is just a distraction. Mm-hmm. It brings peace. Right? The Lord says, hey, 
Rodney, I want you to go 20 paces forward. And on my 10th step, something happens like that. <laughs> A distraction happens. Well, I ain't got to pay no attention to it. Right. I just keep walking forward. Oh, you want me to stop and spend time with you. Mm-hmm. You don't want to waste my 120 years that I have here on this earth. Yeah. Right? Or a long life. The Lord will satisfy you. Yeah. Right? I'll satisfy you with a long life. So, I might be cool at 90. Kenneth Copeland, he wants to do 120. I'll be honest with you. When my brother passed, I was like, you know what? I'm cool. I'm just being honest. The color was just a little faded of life. The color of life was just a little faded. Just a little bit. It seems like I was living a life that I'm not supposed to be living. Like, wait a minute. It ain't supposed to happen like this. Things aren't supposed to turn off this way. It was a distraction. It's a distraction. So I need to keep moving forward. It didn't matter what's going on in your life. God is bigger. Get a word from the Lord. Get a word from the Lord and just keep moving forward. Amen? Amen. Okay. The scripture here is Philippians 4, no, Philippians 3, 12 through 15, NLT. It says, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. In other words, keep moving forward. Uh, Keep renewing your mind. Keep disciplining your flesh. Keep living that righteous life that we talked about in Matthew 6, 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his way of doing things, living that righteous life. Keep going. Keep doing it. Strive to possess that life. Verse 13. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus... I focus on this one thing. Ooh, look at this. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. What lies ahead for you? I don't want to know what you want to do. I want to know what God has for you to do. Right. If it's some dream you concocted, then you can't be blown and and off, off, off track. But if God says it, God's word is true. And it can't change. Right? right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. God didn't give you a word according to your circumstance and situation. And then when that circumstance and situation changes, the end result changes. <laughs> no. It's there for you. Amen? Yeah. Okay. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Verse 14. I press on to reach the end of the race. The race is with you. Mm-hmm. is yourself. You're not racing your neighbor. The race is, listen to this, the race is you completing what God has called you to do. Why is it a race? Why do you look forward? Why do you focus ahead? Because the devil's trying to distract you Mm -hmm. on the way there. You might think you're doing God's will by, oh, I'm fighting this, I'm doing this. and No, go ahead, go. He's trying to delay you. So you won't reach your end goal by the end of your life. He's, he wants you not to reach that. He doesn't want you to complete what God has for you. So on your way, on your, on, the, on your way to your goal, while you're running that race, he wants to trip you. He wants to trip you up. No, you ain't going to complete that. It's going to take the next generation to do that. Come on. Oh, no, it's going to take the next two generations to do that. You see what I'm saying? Satan wants time. Satan already knows his future. He knows he's bound, not only for the bottomless pit, not hell, but the lake of fire. Those are two different places. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. Hell will be thrown into the lake of fire. Yeah. Okay? You thought hell. Right now, you, we have, we have um, 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 stories uh, like the rich man and Lazarus, mm-hmm. how hot it was down there. Oh, my goodness. Send your boy to bring me some water. Just dip this the water to the tip of my tongue. That's how hot hell is. Yeah. Well, hell ain't nothing. You went to get to the lake of fire. Right. Weeping and gnashing of teeth. Mm. 
weeping and gnashing of teeth. Man, those four words right there should, should convict and convert you. Like what? Like what? For real? Like for real, for real? Man. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Verse 15. Let all who are spiritually mature agree on these things. Ooh, agreement. Mm -hmm. If you disagree on some point, I believe God will make it plain to you. You see, we're supposed to be in one accord. Mm -hmm. One accord. Let the word, let the word have final authority. Right? Right? Not your ideas. If I'm up here and I say something, well, guess what? I'm the pastor. You're not my Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Let the Holy Spirit correct me. He will. Amen? Amen. We need to learn our place. We stay in agreement. Right? Right. I say as Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Mm -hmm. Right? That's it. If I go against something or whatever, like uh, something that's planted in you, you grew up this way and, oh, I don't agree with that, this and that, whatever, keep your mouth shut and pray. You know your response is supposed to be pray and love. Yeah. That's it. Okay. I shouldn't hear anything else from you. <laughs> pray and love. Pray and love. Pray and love. But you want to disagree, you want to bicker, you want to talk, you want to undermine uh, the things of God. That's what you're doing. You're violating God and his word. Amen? Amen. Okay. 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 Let all who are spiritually mature agree on these things. If you disagree on some point, I believe God will make it plain to you. But we must hold on to the progress we have already made. Don't draw back. You must hold on to the progress that we've made. Hold on to the progress that you've made. Hold on to it. Don't let offense and unforgiveness cause you to draw back. Because that's the devil behind the curtain. Like Wizard of Oz, or excuse me, the Wiz. That's right. (laughs) That's the devil behind the curtain Mm -hmm. trying to slow you down so you won't reach what he has for you. You know the Bible says that a righteous man has an inheritance for his children's children in, in Psalms. His children's children. The righteous has an inheritance for his children's children. Here are your grandkids. Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 Me following what God, who God is and what he says, at the end of my life, I should have an inheritance for my children's children. My children should be already taken care of. Mm-hmm. And then my children's children. That's what we're doing with our kids. Cloud Christian and Raya. We want to make sure they have something. We're talking about, okay, who's going who's gonna to lead and be the president of RKM, Rodney College Ministries? Who's going to run the Nathaniel Foundation? Who's going to run the school? And that's just now. Yeah. There's many things coming up. There's many, many other things that's coming up. Who's going to take over these companies? Who's going to run them? We're preparing them for that right now. And I'm not even 50 yet. I'm not even old like Mark. I'm not even old like Deacon Mark. <laughs> you know, that verse 16, we must hold on to the progress we have already made. And that goes back to what I was saying earlier. So that keeps mm-hmm. ringing in my mind. Mm-hmm. We get somewhere and we think we can relax. We have to hold on mm-hmm. to it. The body of Christ, we take one step forward and then we take two steps <coughs> back. Or we take two steps forward and then one step back. And we're just marching in place. We're not going forward. We have Mm -hmm. to do more than what we did yesterday. That's right. Whatever you did last year, it's not enough now. Whatever you did and you got comfortable with last year, it's not enough. So if you're doing the same thing, where's your progress? How Mm -hmm. are you moving forward Mm -hmm. in the things of God? Pastor uh, Joshua Bolger, he... um, uh, we're talking about some things. He was telling me some dates. He said, oh, no, 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 I'm going to be in Ireland um, at this time, whatever. And I was like, oh, okay. No, no, I'm going to be in, I'm be in um, um, uh, Ethiopia here. I mean, this, he's a pastor. Mm-hmm. And this, this pastor, this, 
this brother is is all over the place. Right. You thought I was busy. I'm like, this brother be going. He goes. He's busy. Mm -hmm. This is the way. Mm -hmm. You guys ever seen that Mandalorian movie? That was a, this, is the, uh, this is the way. And you know, I'm going to use that as an example. That show, Mandalorian, he's, he's, he's part of a, a, like a group of bounty hunters, and they have a certain way of living what they do. They live by a code. We are just like that. Yeah. We make our decisions, and you have a question on something, and... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick on Trey here for a second. Trey, she wanted to do something. She came and she um, uh, asked questions, and it turned out that, okay, she knew she knew this wasn't the right time to do you know, what, what she was she asking about, what she desired to do. And, and it wasn't like, oh, man, I can't go. It was like, you know what, I want to please God. And, okay, this is not the time. Right. This is the way. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This is the way. This is how we live. Not by what we want, not by our own desires. This is the way. Um, never allow anyone or anything to set the pace for your life. Don't do that. Don't allow them to speed you up and get ahead of yourself. Like, like I could very well be like, um, you notice when um, first lady said, uh, well, we're next. I said, well, I'm not saying that. I know I'm in there. I mean, I hope there's a church somewhere that's after it, gets their land and gets a building. And I don't want to be next and hold them back. You know what I mean? Like, whether I'm next or not, I know that my time, my due season is oh, coming. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. So I don't, I have a guard over my life and what God has called me to, to not let anyone speed me up or a distraction where they slow me down. No, uh -uh. I'm not going to let you set the pace for my life. Mm -hmm. You're not going to slow me down and you're not going to try to speed me up. I could very well get excited like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Pastor Josh got his land. You know, I'm getting mine now. And now I just put myself in the mix of that. Mm -hmm. I just now uh, put myself in the way. So never let anyone set the pace for your life. There is purpose in the process. Get out of the way. If I try and try to get my land, a building, whatever, for the church, get it myself, I'm in the way. I'm allowing God to make it work. He does it. Right now, God, the Bible says, he works in the hearts of men. So right now there's some grumpy, rich, wicked person, and God's working on that person's heart. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Everyone that come, that's come to him, no, get out of my face, no, <laughs> shut the door. When I come up, he's like this. Okay, you understand? Yeah. Let God have work. Yeah. We must let the Holy Spirit. Have its place, have its way. <laughs> you think he's not doing anything. Well, you're here, right? Yeah. How many of you guys have experienced the Holy Spirit, or God moving in their life? Right? Okay. Then why are you ruining, ruining it for the other person by you getting in the way? Right. You understand what I'm saying? Why are you so active trying to play that person's Holy Spirit? Why are you so active in that person's life like you're the Holy Spirit? You're their Holy Spirit. Why are you constantly trying to correct this person? That's not your job. Are you part of the fivefold? Are you a prophet, teacher, evangelist, pastor? Uh, a prophet? Apostle. Apostle, prophet, teacher, evangelist, pastor. If you're in fivefold, you probably should keep your mouth shut, just pray and love. Right? Yeah. Touch not my anointing. Do my prophets no harm. It's all over the, it's all over the word. Aaron and Miriam. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to have its way in our lives. Take a back seat because there is purpose in the process. Don't quit. Never give up. Last verse and we're done. Hebrews 10, 38. Let's go. Hebrews 10, 38. 
but the just will live by faith. My righteous servant shall live by his conviction, respecting man's relationship with God and divine things and holy fervor, born of faith and conjoined with it. And if he draws back and shrinks in fear, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Mm-hmm. My soul has no delight or pleasure in him. Wow. Wow. Stop being so prideful and thinking that your excuse is valid for drawing back. Don't be so prideful in thinking that what you got going on in your life is an excuse that, that God's word is at a, a pause for you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't draw back. Our excuses don't trump the word no, of God. No, that's, that's a great way to say it. Mm-hmm. Our excuses do not trump the word of God. Um, I want to read. I want to read to thirty-nine. Um, but our way is not that of those who draw back. This is not the way, right? Drawing back is not the way. Say that. Drawing back. Drawing back. Is not the way. Is not the way. Okay. But our way is not of those who draw back to eternal misery, perdition, and are utterly destroyed. Oh, this is amplified I'm reading. I apologize. But this is is good. And are utterly destroyed. But we are, uh, we are, but we are of those who believe, who cleave to and trust in and rely on through Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and by our uh, preserve, and by faith, preserve the soul. So I don't have my uh, NLT with me. I do. Did you have that? Mm-hmm. Read verse 39 in NLT, please. But we are not like those who turn away from God to their own destruction. We are the faithful ones whose souls will be saved. Mm. You have a powerful force living inside you. But it's up to you to bring that force to the fight. It's up to you to bring that force on your walk. Yeah. Right? It says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Not because you all that. Not because you're cute. Not because you're so intellectual. Right? You're so inte- intelligent. Mm-hmm. But because thy rod and thy staff, there's two different things. They comfort me. They rod and I staff. The rod and I staff. The staff has that hook at the end. Mm-hmm. You're going too far, hey, I'm going to pull you back. Other one is a, a straight staff where hit the knuckles. You know, that's when a, when a sheep, when they're walking, if you ain't got dogs, um, you hit the knuckle on, that, on the sheep to get them in line, and they get back in line. So one wants to pull, wants to guide. Right? There's a powerful force that lives inside you. But bring him along your walk. <clears throat> If you're living, walking without that force inside you, then you're on your own. Amen? Amen. We were created for a purpose. The force that's inside you is a force to be reckoned with. The devil can't stop you. Only thing, the only one can stop you is you. You're the only one that can stop you. You have no one else to blame. You have a, you've been accomplished around about with, with believers of like faith who are here to help you in that walk. There's no excuse. Only you can stop you. But you need to believe. You have to believe that you're created for a specific purpose. Not just some random, oh, okay, I can just fit here. No. <laughs> you have a specific purpose. You are truly a world changer. You just need to believe it and walk it out. And I can't stress enough, you young kids, get started now. Change the world. Do something jaw-dropping. That's what, the, that's what the Lord wants you to do. What is he saying? What is he speaking to you? Do it. Walk in love. You must love others. That's essential. You can't have strife and beef. 
Learn the power of exhaling. <laughs> Get away. You don't need it. Don't, don't let anything, anyone slow you down. Right? God comes first. Love God. Love others. And remember, Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord. Lord. Amen.